in parts A and B in order to find the X and Y components of this electron's velocity at a time of 1.56 seconds. We're going to remember that in order to compute the velocity, we must take the derivative of the position function with respect to time. So we have rewritten the position function right here. And again, to transform it into velocity, we will compute its derivative with respect to time. And we can do this separately in the x, y, and z direction as indicated by i hat, j hat, and k hat. So for example, computing the derivative in the x direction, we would have the derivative of 3.44t. And the derivative of that with respect to time, of course, is just 3.44. And that will be in the i hat direction. We will need the power rule for the next derivative. We're going to multiply the 2 times the 2.05. So we will get negative 4.10. And then t is now raised to the power of 1. And this would be j hat. And then the derivative of 8.03 is just 0, since 8.03 is a constant, and the derivative of a constant is equal to 0. So this would give us our velocity function. And we want the velocity at a specific time, at 1.56 seconds. So we're going to be plugging in the time of 1.56 seconds. Now there is no more variable t for the i hat component, so we're just going to keep that as 3.44. And then we'll plug in for t the 1.56 seconds. Again, the 3.44 stays the same. And then the j hat component, or the y component, will turn out to be minus 6.396. So for part A, when they ask you for the x component of the velocity, the answer is what we see here in the i hat direction, or the x direction. So that will just be 3.44 meters per second. For part B, we want the y component, and that's given by the j hat component. So you'll have negative 6.396 meters per second. Now on to part C, we need the magnitude of the electron's velocity. And to obtain the magnitude of the electron's velocity, we're going to make a little bit of a sketch here. So we'll draw a y and x axis. And then we'll take the x component, which was positive 3.44. And because it's positive, you're going to want to draw a vector along the positive x direction. And you can label that 3.44 meters per second. The y component is negative. So you're going to project a vector downward along the y-axis, and that will have an, a magnitude of 6.396 meters per second. So again, in part C, we want the magnitude of the velocity, of the resultant velocity, really. And we can find that by drawing a vector from the origin to the tip of our y component, and we can perhaps just label this the v for velocity. So we just use Pythagorean theorem now to solve for v. We'll have v squared is equal to 3.44 squared plus the 6.396 squared. If you compute the quantity on the right hand side, you will get v squared is equal to 52.74. And then of course to solve for v, you'll just go ahead and take the square root on both sides. So V will turn out to be 7.26 meters per second. So this would be the magnitude of the velocity and the correct answer to part C. Finally, in part D, we are asked to find the angle relative to the positive direction of the x-axis. And we can use our diagram to find that as well. If we go back to the diagram, basically they're looking for this angle right here, theta. And you'll notice that the tangent of that angle would equal the side opposite of the angle, which is the 6.396, divided by the adjacent side, which is 3.44. You can go ahead and divide 6.396 by 3.44, and you're going to get 1.86 approximately. And then to finish off finding the angle, you'll take the inverse tangent of that value. And when you do that, you're going to get 61.7 degrees. Now we need to be a little bit careful here because technically, because that angle is below the positive x-axis, we have to assign a negative sign to the angle. So the final answer will be negative 61.7 degrees.